Nate and I would like to thank the Niagara Corporation for sponsoring today's episode of Let Me Tell You Something. Niagara is the country's leading manufacturer of water-conserving plumbing products, including toilets that reduce water usage by up to 60%. Niagara products were originally designed just for plumbing professionals, but they're now available for homeowners as well. So, if you're remodeling your home or constructing new, check out NiagaraCorp.com to get long-lasting water savings. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Isaiah Stand back, back in the building for another episode of Let Me Tell You Something. Yes. Yeah, y- y'all hear it. Y'all, y'all hear my boy. That's my big dog, big Nate dog in the building. And we always come in here to try to bring y'all some fire. You guys see our logo on there. Y'all, when y'all clicked on the podcast to either listen to it or watch it, y'all see the helmet. So you know we always going to talk a little bit of El Football, and that's not football with the U. That's football with the Okay, the two O's right there. Okay, so that's what we're here to talk about. We're going to let you guys know a little, always a little something about the Dallas Cowboys. But you guys have two two vets, one one amazing vet in, in Mr. Nate Newton, the, the, the boss hog himself, boss the, the road the grader. Huh? The road grader. We said the, the yeah. big nasty. Yes, huh? sir. Yes, sir. What they that's call you back in the day, Nate? That's how we do it. But I wish I was built like you, Isaiah, like a Greek warrior. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You don't want to look like a coat hanger right now, Nate. That's all I look like, a straight wire coat hanger off the dry cleaner. I hear you, brother. What, what wow. was your nickname back in the day, Nate? What oh, they did they call, call you? Big Time. Whenever you want to get so get you know get me really going, just call me Big Time. They just call me Big Time. My high school coach, Calvin Perry, named me Big Time, man. Other than that, I was Newton. Newton. I growing up Newton. Newton. So then How did you yeah. get the nickname Big Time? How did your high school coach give you that name? Uh, I used to be always messing around, playing around, not taking things serious. And I think one time the Steelers players, guys like uh, L.C. Greenwood, a uh, mm. couple of the Steeler players came out of school back in uh, 78, 77, uh, 77, 78. And instead of me going to the auditorium where everybody else was listening to the pro players talk, I'm out in the halls jacking around, having fun, looking to see what I could scheme up on next. And the coach caught me out there. And he said, man, you're not in there listening to these pro athletes. And I'm like, nah. I'm like, okay, coach, uh, you caught me. Then he said, son, he looked me right in my eyes. I'm talking to this, my high school coach said, man, he said, you can be something special. You can be big time. I'm like, what do you mean? He said, man, you, 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 the pros, you can be big time. And I looked at him, I said, I hear you, coach. But from that day on, every time he saw me, what's up, big time? What you doing, man? Remember, right. you can be big time. Then a couple of the players like, what? what's CC calling you? That's what we call him, CC. What's CC? Big time. I said, big, he calling me big time. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. He th- you know, because they always think I was the favorite to the coach anyway. So they yeah. started calling me big time. And guess what? Yes, what? Many years <laughs> later. Yes, sir. Big yes, sir. Time is here, baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. My, yeah. my stories aren't as cool as yours, Nate. I, I had a few nicknames growing up. Back Zeus. in the day. I want to know how yeah. you got Zeus. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you how I got the word, how I got the name Zeus. But back in the day, I, I don't know, right. you know, the world the world's a little sensitive nowadays, Nate, but I'm going to tell you the game that we used to play, okay? Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to sugarcoat it because we're on our podcast. We used to play the game called Smear the Queer back in the day. You remember that right. game? Yes, sir. Okay. And it was, the game was you would get the ball, and it was literally you versus the rest of the guys that were playing on the field, guys or gals, whoever was out there. And right. your goal was to get from wherever you were all the way to opposing end zone without getting touched right. and, or without getting tackled. Right. And, and I would always shake and bake. You know, I always had this little vision of Barry Sanders, so I would, uh, uh, you know, right. give everybody the McNasties <laughs> and – I didn't want nobody to tackle me. So after a while, Nate, people wouldn't chase me. I would literally right. get the ball and they would say automatic touchdown. And it got wow. it, it, and it got to the point where it wasn't fun anymore because nobody was chasing me. The whole thrill of playing the game was that somebody would chase you and try to get you. And then the, you got the gratification from shaking and baking everybody. Right, right. So they started calling me a chicken chaser. <laughs> <laughs> A what chaser? They called me a chicken chaser back in the day, wow. Nate, because chicken chasers were always they were they were nonstop running. They had right. to have a lot of agility in order to get the chickens because right. them chickens right. could move. So everybody, 
Everybody called me a chicken chaser. I could never catch him. house. I could never catch him. Really? You used to chase chickens? Yeah, I used to chase chickens. Man, I could never. Man, I, I used to try to <laughs> jam them up in the corner. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's how you yeah. get your hands right. Yeah, okay. man. But wow, chicken chaser. Wow, dog. So, so chicken chaser was the original name that I had. Right. And then it transitioned once I got to high school. There, I had I had one of my basketball teammates named Marcellus, and this dude was a complete clown. I grew up playing with a lot of really good basketball players. He was right. one of those just smooth cats, man. I mean, he was just 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 shot was butter nature. Right, right, Crossovers right. were smooth, and Marcellus used to always say, "Man, this dude could throw the ball so far. He, you throw the ball like 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 Zeus throws lightning bolts." He says, "So, so <laughs> your name is your name is Zeus Sai." I'm like, "What?" He said, "Your name is Zeus." <laughs> Sigh. <laughs> so every time I'd be on the on the court or on the on the football field, Marcel would see me. He'd be like, Zeus sigh. <laughs> okay, okay. And everybody wow. just picked it up. Everybody picked it up. So that's how I got the nickname Zeus. They said I was throwing footballs like lightning bolts, man. Okay. Okay. Wow. That, that, that that's pretty neat right there, man. That that's pretty neat. Well, you always you always slipping up on something, man. It turned out to be pretty good in the end, don't you? Yeah, it's all good, man. Now everybody yeah. just calls me Dread because of my hair. But when I when I decide to cut this, cut all this stuff off, Nate, I don't know what they're gonna call me no more. I don't think they can call right. me Dread no more. Uh, you, hopefully, man. they don't call me Fade Away Hairline like some people we know. Uh, I ain't gonna <laughs> oh, mention no names. <laughs> they ain't on this podcast. Going there with you, <laughs> Nate. I, I'm not trying to have a Fade Away Hairline, man. I hear you, man. Hey, uh, so you mentioned back in the day at the house. Did you have anybody that ever came back in terms of you, – you mentioned there were some pro players in there talking. Who who was the one person that came and spoke? Maybe I don't know if you're in elementary, College, middle school, yeah, high school, at, that came and spoke to you that it really kind of resonated with you and that you kind of held them in high regard and looked at them as a, hey, you know what? I could be that too. You know, uh, no, to be honest with you, my, 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 my stars are always distant. And like, okay. you know, and it was, it, it could be guys like, like Tony Dorsett. I used to look at Tony Dorsett when he was with the Pitt Panthers. And I used to be like, wow, to see the things that he do because he was a running back. And I, you know, everybody was infatuated back then with running backs. Uh, uh, believe it or not, uh, Bob Lilly and uh, Super okay. Bowl against Miami. You know, my guys were always distant guys. Randy White. You know, because I was a Cowboys fan, but then I also liked the Steelers, which I learned to hate the Steelers. You know, Mean Joe Green. You know, and this, and then for me to look back and say, "Wow, these guys were at my school," and then I didn't have that that love for them. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but Larry Little came to Florida and M when I was there, and I looked at him, and I, and then they had a Miami had another great center, Stevens, I think. And I like, wow, and I looked at how small he was and playing center. And I'm like, man, you don't have to be big and fat and sloppy to play football, even though I was on that road to that very same thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it just – now, th those guys amazed me because Larry Little went to Bethune-Cookman. Okay. And Stevens, he came from uh, Alabama. But just to look at these guys and for them to come to our school and just to speak to us, man, I thought that was real special. That's pretty dope. See, you yeah. know, you already know this about me. We've talked about it on some of the earlier podcasts. I wasn't a football guy growing up. I right. was a baseball, basketball, track guy. Those were those were my sports that I played prior to picking up football. So I didn't have football guys that I looked to. I mean, I admired Bo Jackson because of his absolute just athleticism Whoa. and his versatility. Yeah, I mean, that's still, in my opinion, he's still the greatest athlete to ever grace God's earth, in my opinion. I don't know if you would differ on that, but. That dude was was special. He was oh. special. He was special, man. He yeah. was he he was unique in what he did, man. Did wow. you play at the same time as Bo? Uh, yeah, we played. Yeah, we played at the same time. We played at the same time. Then he got hurt. Then we played for the Raiders, and he blew his. Yeah. You, you, you got to tell me this. when you watched him. When you watched him play in person, what was that like, man? Uh, just like when I ever saw any special player, and and I and, and I'm with you. I only. So a few special players, that was Barry Sanders, that was Bo Jackson, that was Deion Sanders. And, uh, I mean, they were just so unique. They were always on a different level, and they just kept your blood at a high 
You know, they, yeah. the doctor said I got high blood. I think I got that from Barry Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> what he used to do to the Cowboys. Uh, it, it, man, when you see guys like that and you be like, you be in awe. You be in awe of them. Because you know that if you slip and don't, you know, like Jordan had his rules, Barry had his, Bo yeah. had his, Dion had his, but you never know when you don't stay in your lane or you don't uh, put right. your hands on them or you don't uh, fill your gap. It was going to be a big play. And that, it was scary, man. It was exciting, but it was scary. Yeah. In terms of just amazing, just unfathomable guys that were in their own category of specimen. There was only one guy that I faced in my entire career that I could really put on that pedestal physically in terms of their yeah. athleticism. And this was in college. I, and I consider him to be the greatest college football player of all times. And this is obviously obviously disputable. Right. But Reggie Bush. He Reggie was nice. Bush was I nice. Mean, oh, my goodness. I think he <laughs> at, in college, he, he had to nice. be the closest thing to what Barry Sanders was in the league. Yeah. And, yeah, he was nice. And I, I would like to get your opinion on it in terms of when you were playing for Dallas, playing against those those tough battles against the Detroit Lions, and you had a chance to sit there on the sideline and watch Barry Sanders work against your defense. What was your mindset? Because as a quarterback on offense, obviously. I did not dude, sit. I dude, stood I up to watch and watched the game. Yeah. But yeah, like, you're, you're, you're caught in this weird dichotomy between you're like, I want our defense to stop this dude, but at the same time, I want to see what he's going to do next. And I remember watching Reggie Bush do this and just simply just run circles around our defense. And I'm like, man, we need to stop. But at the same time, this dude is freaking amazing. That was dope. (laughs) Like, Did you ever find yourself doing that with Barry? Man, Barry, uh, Joe Montana. I never sat down when he, when he was quarterback. I never sat down with Dan Marino. Played against him. I never, I, you know, the coach be like, Nate, get back here. Every time we come off the field, I want you behind <laughs> planting on this bench. He ain't saying it's nice. I was saying it. Yeah, I'm yeah. saying it. And I, but I'd be like, all right, coach, all right, coach, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Then we come off the field, I walk right to like the 30 yard line, and I'd be looking back. You're like, do you want us back there? Because if you want to say something, I'm watching this game. Yeah. <laughs> My coach is looking at me and shaking his head. I'm like, coach, you don't get to see great players. Not all the time. Yes. I, I used to watch this cat. This kid, this cat was special. Man, that's wild. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that's the closest thing I guess I can come to the, the athleticism. Now, obviously, in terms of just – Amazing players. I, obviously, I was blessed to play with what I well, I think we all probably considered a goat at quarterback in in Tom Brady. And yeah, that you was find your, that was very unique. And I and I think I've mentioned this before, but like my you you made it moment was when we we're playing a Sunday night football game in Indianapolis against Peyton Manning, and I'm in the huddle during a TV timeout. In the huddle, mm. while we're waiting for, you know, TV timeouts seemingly take forever, Nate. Right, we're sitting right. there looking at each other and just having a regular conversation. And I'm talking with Randy Moss and looking at Tom Brady in the same huddle. And I'm like, this is a movie. And I'm, I'm literally, Nate, I'm looking, I'm talking with Moss. I'm looking at Tom Brady. I'm looking across the way. I see Peyton Manning standing up on the sideline just waiting to see what's going to happen. I'm looking around Lucas Oil Stadium. I'm like, this is... Is a movie. It's a, it's literally a movie, and we ended up losing that game. They came back and beat us at the last second, which is another movie. I think it'll go down in one of the best games probably in in, in NFL history. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, we were on the losing end of that. But like that was my, I was in amazement of what Tom was doing in terms of his drive and his determination. But at the same time, I couldn't sit back and watch because I was a part of it, right? And I had a responsibility. So. Part of me wanted to sit on, on the sideline and kind of watch this dude work, but a lot of but the other part of me was like, all right, dude, you got to be locked in on this game plan and don't let this guy down. Man, I, I'm gonna tell you something, man. It has so been so many great players that it's <clears throat> come through this league. That's why I don't play the greatest. That's why mm-hmm. I don't play the greatest game. Okay. I, I got guys where I rank high above everybody else, but yeah. I don't play uh 
could this guy do this and could this guy do oh in this era, this era, this era, because the rules have changed and right. it has freed up a lot of players to be uh uh great. You know, yeah. people say, well, damn, Marino could do it. Oh, my God. If, they, if, if Joe Montana, no, they played in their era and they were great and they are great now. So when I when I when you talk about great players uh, and, and you talk about a true top 100, man, and I know it'll change with every person, but right. it ain't but a few. Yeah. You know, like when I look, when I think of defensive linemen, what Randy, what uh, Reggie White, you know, wow, what he did. Was he Hell, just that nasty, Nate? Uh, he laid hands on you. He was a pastor. He laid hands on you in a very physical way. You know, you God, remember that. Yeah, the God said, fear me. I mean, he brought that fear of God to you, bro. And it don't matter who. The only person that could slow him down was Eric Williams. The only, the only person could slow him down. He doesn't Eric get enough Williams. respect, Nate. Who e, is that? Big E does not get enough respect. Man, Big E, Big E changed the way. You talking about heat culture, beat my Celtics. You talking about teams that have culture, like the Patriots at one time had that culture and probably still do. They're just waiting on a quarterback. You know, right. teams with culture. Your, your Seahawks, I think they have a culture because yeah. they know how to build teams. The Steelers with a culture and uh, a working hard, blue collar, Bo your neck. Yeah, that, that's who those guys, they, that's who he was, man. That's 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 what it's all about, bro. That's that's dope. That's dope. Ah, oh, man. All right, we went down memory lane. All right, one, yeah. one thing I want to hit on real quick today, Big Nate. Mm-hmm. Offense. Hey, we're both offensive guys. You were down there with the with the big nashies in there moving big guys out the way. I was either behind center or running around on the outside, running away from men in tights. Okay. Um uh, <laughs> what I want to know if you had to pick a dominant offense, would you much rather be dominant on the ground or would you much rather be dominant in the air in this 2023 realm of football? Uh, if if we're talking about now, Isaiah, if we're talking about now, uh, I would probably be a 60, 40 guy, 60 okay. pass, 40 run. Uh, yes, I, I would. I would because uh, Coach McCarthy said something that is so unique. Uh, G- Coach John, Coach Jimmy Johns, you just said to Parcells too. It's not how many times you run; it's can you run that ball when they know it's coming. Third and short, uh, uh, red zone, goal line uh, to close the game out. To close a half out. Because if you look at the quarterbacks that are winning Super Bowls, they throwing it, man. They throwing it. And then I look at Kansas City and the way they came out in the second half saying, okay, we are, we're not doing what we need to do passing. Now yeah. they started running it. So in today's game, I'll, I'll take a 55-45. I'll take a 60-40, you know. But back when I played, 50-50 was the only way. 50-50 was the only way because the defenses were so much more dominant when I played because the game was so more much more physical. Right. So uh, if, if these rules that we have now were in effect back then, a lot of coaches would have been dumbfounded. I ain't, I ain't saying they wouldn't, wouldn't have caught on. But they'd have been dumbfounded because they wanted to pound your head in. And that came from Pop Warner, uh, uh, elementary, junior high, high school, college. That's how we were taught. Even you could throw the ball. You were Zeus. Throw the ball like bolts of lightning. But what did they want you to do? Hey, man, if things get at you, take off and run. That's how we was drilled in. But to win games today, you're talking about today, from maybe 90, probably about 95 to now, you got you to gotta chunk that thing, bro. You got to chunk Nate, that thing. No, yeah. Nate. I didn't, I didn't expect you to say that. I didn't expect I, you to I, say I, that, I'm Nate. I'm sorry, man. If, if we can't evolve, if we can't evolve, man, then we become Neanderthalish. Is that a word? I don't like that, Nate. I don't like that, Nate. <laughs> well, tell me what you feel, Zeus. I don't like that, tell Nate. Tell me All what right. you feel. I'm about to go down the line. Go down the line. And I'm about to tell you the top five passing offenses 
mm-hmm. from last year. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to tell you the top five rushing offenses from last year. Yes, sir. And I, and I want you to tell me which side. Again, I'm going to ask you again. Mm. Which side would you rather adopt if you had to adopt an offense right now? If Nate Newton was a head coach, which of these teams' systems would you adopt? Okay? So, top five passing statistical teams from last mm-hmm. year. Who do you think is number one? Uh, probably Miami, somebody like that. Okay, you're close. You're close. Kansas City. Mm-hmm. Kansas City's number one. Number two, Nate Dog. Tampa Bay. Yes, but that was a – see, you know I, I'm watching these games and listening to you. That was a need thing. They could not run the ball. They could not run the ball. Yes, that was a need Very thing. Much. Yes. Very much so. I don't, I don't disagree. This is just a fact right. from last year. L.A. Chargers are at number three. Uh-huh. Miami Dolphins at number four. Mm-hmm. Minnesota Vikings at number five. Mm-hmm. Okay. All you right. feel good about those five? Those are that's the top no, five no, passing no, offenses. No, 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 no I, I don't because you know I know them. Uh, <laughs> their running back was not a hundred percent at Minnesota, yeah. uh, so uh, you you know I know the inside. Like you, you be telling me these things, so I know. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? Where, no, I do not take those top five. No. Nah, where do you I think, think Dallas Kansas ranked out of out of, top, out of 32 teams? Where do you think Dallas ranked in terms of passing offenses last year? Probably about. Five or six? 14, Nate. 14? Okay. 14, Nate. Okay. They're behind oh, Seattle, right behind I Vegas. Out of five or six first games, we weren't trying to chunk it. Facts, because yes. because your man's was out. Okay. Right. All right, here we go. So those are the top five. Just a reminder, mm-hmm. Kansas City, Tampa Bay, mm-hmm. Chargers, Miami, and Minnesota. Right. right. Remember, those are the passing offenses. Okay, right. now here we go. Here goes the verses. If you had to choose... Are you sticking with the passing teams or are you going to go with these five rushing teams from last year? Chicago Bears, number mm-hmm. one. And they had their quarterback didn't, didn't know the game. The game got to slow down for their quarterback. Yes. Facts. Right on. Okay. Baltimore Ravens. Uh, they quarterback was in and out of the lineup and he really he got paid though, but he was in and out of the lineup. <laughs> <laughs> Atlanta Hawk Falcons. That, they had to. No quarterback, no system. They had to run. Okay. New York Giants. Oh, man, a team that's up and coming and learning. Got a good uh, uh, offensive coordinator. <laughs> yeah, they they the nice. offensive coordinator. Yeah. And then number five, the Philadelphia Eagles. Ooh. That's a now, I'm number. Rem- that's I'll remind you now, Nate, okay? On one side, okay, this is like NBA jams. You got to pick which squad you're going with, okay, based upon the offensive system that they have. Passing offense – or a rushing offense. If you had to take the best offense from one of these sides, that's what you're rolling with. Rushing you offense. Take the quarterbacks out because yeah, the yeah, this, two guys this pure... you name, the Philadelphia quarterback and the Kansas City quarterback, <laughs> they 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 reached it. They top five and they reached their Come goals. On. Come on, but I'm, I'm I'm gonna tell you something, man. And I and, okay. and uh, I got to stay with this. And today's NFL, man. I got I got to roll with the passing, and you jam me up. Yeah, in today's NFL, your team and what you have in front of you is going to tell you, Isaiah. You, that, that Kansas City, if they had the offensive line that Philadelphia has, okay, they would have ran the they would have ran the puppy stream up out of that thing, man. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be like a puppy with with the runs, man. I'm telling you, if they, if they they would have had more games where they were to rush for two or three hundred yards, because I'm telling you, Philadelphia offensive line was that good last year. Uh huh. You know the other guys that you named was it Atlanta and the guys like they had to run the ball, lack of quarterback. I mean, okay. I, I I see what you're trying to say, and I know you like the run game. I love the run game, but to have the ball 35 minutes. And they'd be down by 14 because they connected on two bombs. That ain't nice. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't nice. But you got you, 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 you win it. Time of possession only counts when you have a dominant defense. And all of these guys that you're naming did not always have a dominant defense. Because hey. when you have a run game, and I'm I'm telling you, they go hand in hand. A dominant defense with a run game. 
will, 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 will catapult you like Philadelphia where you need to be. And even in the playoffs, if you go back and check Kansas City, uh, their defense stepped up big. The big Jones kids stepped up big. And, and they, they go hand in hand, and that's what got Philadelphia in the second half. I, I'm, I'm not going to ever tell you I don't like running the ball. I love I running that. the ball. I like matching I know that. the ball. But okay. is the, the, to have the ball and to possess the ball, you got to know that you got to always be pushing it downfield. I, I got to keep you inside of your 30. I got to keep you. you inside of your 30. And if I'm not doing that, I'm, I'm hurting my defense. Because it, it, the run game just requires so much more. Yeah. You know. See, but Nate, when I, when I look at this, I, so I hear you. I see your point, okay? But when we talk about culture and we talking about types of offenses. You're talking about being – yeah, I, see, I see where you're going. Go ahead on, man. Go ahead. Look on. at this. Okay, you see, see what I'm talking about. Going, Listen, yeah. the top rushing teams that I mentioned – the strength of their team, I would have to say, is defense. Mm-hmm. So you look at Chicago Bears. The strength of their team is what? It is defense. And defense. they run game. Baltimore Ravens. Oh, yeah. Yeah, when they when the Baltimore is at their best, their defense is dominating. Okay. New York Giants. Oh, they came on strong, man. The surprise of the NFC East and the NFL itself. Their D line is nasty. Yeah, D line is nasty. And they just signed Atlanta back Falcons to guys. Atlanta Falcons. I don't Falcons. know much about them. I don't know much okay. about them. I know they didn't okay. have a, a viable. So they're a question mark. This year. Yeah. Okay, so we got Chicago defense, Baltimore defense, Atlanta yeah. question mark, New York Giants defense. defense. Yes. Philadelphia Eagles. Who master defense? They got a University of Georgia defense. Okay, so you want to talk about possession of the ball, Nate? Possession of the ball. Four out of the five top rushing offenses have defenses that play complementary ball with them, and they're able to control the ball and put them in, in situations where they can win ball games. Yes, right, yeah, right, because gotcha. they're arrested. Okay. They're arrested. Yeah. All right. So now let's flip it over to to uh, passing offenses. Kansas City Chiefs. Which one's more dominant, offense or defense? The offense. I mean, Kansas offense. City. Yes. Off. Absolutely. You got Tampa the best Bay. quarterback in the league. Uh, Tampa Bay. The, you know what? That that ain't fair. That old age you got him. Oh, oh, come on, man. They aged out. How you, how your computer do? It said timed out. They timed out, dog. Don't do that. So, Let's so you're saying their defense? They timed their out. Their defense. Yeah. So they their defense. Out. So we're going to we're going to Tampa Bay defense. Yeah, timed out. All right. Uh, L.A. Chargers offense or defense? <sighs> their defense was nice. They their defense is loaded. Hurt. Their offense was hurt all year. Yeah, they, okay. they one of their main receivers was gone. Miami Dolphins. They it got to be their defense because their, their offense started so. strong. Their, their offense started strong, but in the end, they put so they much pressure Tua. on defense that it broke. They broke they their Tua. defense. Yeah, okay. Tua, but he couldn't stay healthy. Okay, so we're gonna go yeah. defense. Come Miami, Miami's putting together one heck of a roster, Nate. Yeah. Nobody's paying attention to them boys. Them boys are nasty. All right, and then the last one, Minnesota Vikings. Offense or defense? They offense, man. They got to be yeah. offense because they, they defense, boys. They've been suffering since Zim left. Zim, Zim didn't lead them in good hands, man. Wow. All right, so we have three out of the five passing offenses, top five, are defense de- defensively stronger than they right. are offensively. Right. All right, and then we have four of the five on the rushing side that have stronger defenses than their offense. Right. So right. I asked the question again, Nate, Before we got to hop off the air. Would you much rather have a dominant passing game or a dominant rushing game in this NFL? I'd rather have a dominant passing game. Y'all gonna I'm Nate. sorry. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. And today, if you ain't throwing, <laughs> you ain't winning, bro. The run, what the run does, listen to me, people. What the run does, it gives you a chance to reset when bad things has happened, an interception, whatever, your defense get it back. You go down and you settle your offense down. 
it gives you the extra downs when you're in third and short. It gives you the extra downs, you know, so you can continue to move the ball. When it gives you in, in the red zone, when it's so tight down there, the ability to run it in makes you stack the line even closer to give you just that little bit of space in the, in the end zone to throw the ball. I'm telling you, you have to run when people know you're coming. That is the tight run game. I know when people know you're coming, a la – San Francisco. He did not mention San Francisco. But when San Francisco made their run in the playoffs, they had 18 different quarterbacks. But what remained the same is a great defense and a hell of a run game. That remained the same. And then you knew they was coming at you, and you still couldn't stop them. Now, I'm, I'm, I don't I'm bringing it down Nate. to you, Zeus. I'm giving you the I lightning bolts, I don't disagree bolts, with baby. you, Nate. I'm giving you the I lightning don't... bolts. <laughs> hey, I need to make sure everybody out there listening. I need y'all if you guys have a printer, a, a, a printer and a, and a t-shirt press at home. Okay, I need you guys to make a shirt. What size? What size we need? Dayton, Nate, uh, double X, triple X, 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 whatever. Uh, going, going to get a triple X because I know it's going to be weighed down with love from these people. <laughs> yeah. All right, I need y'all to make a triple X shirt that says Nate Newton. All right, or my fault. Big time prefers <laughs> passing. Over rushing. That's all I need to say. Hey, I want you to call a quarterback, a quarterback, Zeus, who throws balls like likes of both <laughs> loves a running game. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right, man. Well, we're going we to see how this thing plays out. Then we are going to bring this conversation back up by the middle of the season. Okay. We are going to re-ask this question because I don't disagree well, with you. Now, I believe it's got to be a caveat. What is best for the Dallas Cowboys? See, it, it may be different for each team. Okay, Agree real quick. Real, real quick. Before, we'll get into this another day, but before right. we, as a prerequisite to the to another episode, will Dallas will the Dallas Cowboys be more of a passing team this year or a running team with Mike McCarthy as offensive coordinator now? Or well, he's the head coach slash shot number the offensive coordinator. I tell you what, until I know who they is, they better be a run team. I don't know who this <laughs> team is. I don't know who the five starters is. They better be a run team to balance this thing out so the defense can be dominant and give them the ball back. That Now, each team carries its own flavor, you know. I mean, come on, if you, if you have Patrick Mahomes, but you're going to say, hey, Patrick, we finna, we finna run this thing 40 times. Hey, okay. So, so the, hey, Nate, so the analytics are saying, and it sounds like Nate Newton saying, if your defense – it's the strength of your team. Me, you better run. You better be a rushing rock. team. That's right. Okay. I love that. All right, bet. All right. Yeah. Hey, it's virtual handshake. We're on the same page now. Virtual handshake. There you go. <laughs> hey, hey, exactly. <laughs> hey, man. Wacking, man. <laughs> the bushwhackers, baby. Hey, Nate, what do we always say at the end of the show, man? We did what? We flushed another one. Y'all, all right. We flushed another one. Thank you, Niagara. Hey, y'all, we'll see y'all next time. I on the let me tell you something. Man, the weight done got to my toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we'll see y'all next time, man. We go. Tell you something.